Uh, pleased with how things have started. You know, I, I like the starting pitching. Leiter was clearly in command of what he was doing. I thought Jamie pitched well. Uh, Dorsey, both times out, has been impressive. Uh, both of his secondary pitches were in play, and the fastball really has good life, as we've talked about and as you've seen. We have to get some of the other arms engaged in this thing a little bit more. We've got to get Ben Barrett out there. We need Noah Short to be better. Um, Gavin's receiving treatment, not pitching this weekend. The young guns, we need Saucer, we need Lout, and we need Rowan to continue to evolve. You know, I, that gives us a good starting point. Army will be – he'll throw live today for the first time in a while to hitters. He threw live before he went down. Um, but he'll throw this afternoon live, and hopefully we have him at some point this weekend, probably Sunday. Probably not as much with Whitaker and Dorsey after what they did Tuesday night. Very pleased with Whitaker. You guys have seen him sharp before. I thought everything he did was on point. His fastball was crisp, both sides of the plate, threw some good sliders, threw some good change-ups. We got him. I think he threw 77 pitches, so that was right where he needed to be. Probably could have gone a little further, and then Dorsey came in and did a good job. So, overall – I'm happy with things. I defensively, there there are moments I have concerns. We discussed it. Uh, the cleanliness of some of the things that happened that may be a little off script. We we just got to continue to tighten that up, and we work on it. We've tried some different things to just improve the instinctual awareness of what we're doing on the field defensively. So that would be probably my biggest concern after three games. Any questions? You guys should be able to unmute yourself. Link, you you started Jackson on opening day behind the plate, and then and then Mac the last two games. Just what have you seen from from those two guys behind the plate defensively through the first three? Well, I think they they received and blocked fairly well. Um, you know, the throwing part of it, we've had minimal opportunities with the throwing, but I, I think they handled respectively the guys they caught and did a really nice job with it. I have no no complaints with what I saw behind the plate. Um, you know, Holbrook, obviously, the, the game he played here at home, great at bats. Um, he's going to compete, and Jackson West is going to compete. Both of those guys give you a tough, a tough at bat. They put the ball in play. I think you're going to continue to see those guys back and forth. And ultimately, it does keep everybody fresh. And Riley Jackson can handle it. And Marco has shown flashes behind the plate of being very special with what he does. So I like it. The depth allows guys to stay sharp and fresh. And you have pinch hit, pinch run opportunities. So it's a, it's a good thing. I've, I've been fine with what I've seen behind the plate out of, out of everybody, quite frankly. Even Riley when he went in the game the other night. Link, you, you talked about probably not having Connor and, and Carson this weekend. I guess, do you know going into the weekend what Sunday plans look like, or does that depend on how the first two games go, who you need to use? Exactly, Kurt. We're going to let the first two games play out and then see. And we have extended – like, we've extended Ben Barrett and Tejeda. So they're capable of giving you 65, 70, 75, if it's low stress, upwards of 80 pitches. Now – we get to that Friday, Saturday, get through it. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Those guys are prepared. And if we use them, <laughs> any of these other guys could go out there and start the game. I don't want to overcook, you know, the starting versus being used in leverage out of the bullpen. It, it'll it take care of itself. But obviously Whitaker, we, we talked about this for an hour, just this decision. He had trained – to start games, and we felt like going to JU our first time on the road. JU's good; like they have really good arms. We thought the wisest way to use Whitaker out of the gate was to let him have a clean start and go get into the start and pitch, as opposed to maybe opening him and letting him throw thirty or forty-five pitches, then trying to bounce him back Sunday. We just thought it was in everybody's best interest to let him experience a start and go pitch and uh, kind of do what he was trained to do. So I was happy with how it went. And then we'll just, we'll figure out Sunday once we get through Saturday.
like you like, talked about, uh, I'm sorry, you talked about trying to get some of these other guys um, on the mound. How, like how long of a process, is there an ideal amount of time in terms of the season um, where you're doing evaluating and really figuring out who can do what and what roles? Uh, I mean, is that a season long process or usually like in the first month or is there a goal for when you like to hone in on that? Well, you just have to see what it looks like in game and then the repeatability in game. I, I can't nail down like a specific time frame on that. I think it's just the pitch execution, the bounce back and then repeating good execution. That's what you hope you see. I, I don't think I have like a hard or even a soft line as to when you feel that you've made those decisions, that the ebbs and flow of the season, this, this changes weekly, as you guys all have seen. So it's just the the experience and, and the bounce back in the field that you have when they're on the mound. And then, you know, at times you learn a little bit more about the matchup. With some of these freshmen, you, you don't have enough matchup data yet in game to decide what the matchup may lead you to. Like, Lauk and Rowan, are they – far more effective against lefties. Sometimes a lefty may be more effective against righties for some reason. So you're still gathering data. And I think it's really a never ending process and evaluation and how the season goes and who's fresh. You just have to manage it that way. And then I think there may be some guys that close games that didn't envision closing games. And there may be guys that start that probably may not have imagined that would happen. So the ebbs and flows of it, and obviously keeping their health and, and their pitch log count in mind. I mean, it's a, it's a big picture decision and it just evolves with the season. Link, you uh, mentioned Western Carolina is a pretty good team, you know, 43 runs over the first four games. What do they bring offensively? That's going to be a challenge for your pitchers this weekend. They're physical. They're very experienced, very experienced team on the mound, three different looks out of the starting pitchers. They've got some physical guys, um, I think their most experienced bats, some of the middle lineup bats, again, left-handed. Um, they're just experienced. And, you know, we have some experienced offensive players too, but maybe not to the degree they have. It's just the logging of at-bats and seeing the different stuff that they've seen through the course of their careers. They've got some guys that can do damage. So we have to try to minimize and play clean, and hopefully our starting pitchers can, again, navigate and get us into the game. They did a nice job of that the first weekend. Um, but with an experienced offensive team, it really becomes even more important that those starters lengthen it out. Their experience, Allen knows what he's doing. We were in the regional in 2022 at Georgia Southern. Like he's, he knows what this looks like. He's coached really good teams. And this is an experienced, well prepared physical group that's rolling in here. Just how pleased have you been with the start from from Cam and Diamas at, at one two in the order? I think Diamas has let off every game with the leadoff single, and and Cam the the three hit game at Jacksonville with the double to lead off the ninth. Those guys are are very close. They're friends. They work so hard at this. They're engaged in everything that we do. They're they're just great kids, and to have them one two in the order is pretty cool. Like. They're buddies, and they kind of get this thing going and lead it off, and they're totally different. Like, they're totally different offensive-type players. But it's been it's been nice. I've been really happy with how Diamas has managed his at-bats. Um, I think his base running has been good. We've been able to capitalize. Some things have lined up for us. It doesn't always work that way with the run game. It has worked that way. It's not that easy. Um, our guys have done a good job with the run game, both of them. And then – you know, Cam, I, I think the at-bat in the ninth inning the other night, their closer, it's it's very good command of very, very good stuff. And we just watched that at-bat again in here. That ball was in the bottom, bottom, bottom of the zone at 92 miles an hour on the outside corner of the plate, and he just rifled it, and we needed it. We clearly had momentum of that game, and if you buy into the momentum piece, they had taken it. Like it, the pendulum had swung to their side and somebody needed to step up and give us a like a, a difference making extra base hit type at bat. And we needed it. I, that might have been our only extra base hit in the game. But 
boy, was it timely. And if you if you go back and watch that, there was just an exceptional piece of hitting to, to jumpstart us there in the ninth. Those, those guys are just great kids, and to see them perform is, is fun for everybody. Anything else for Link? Brett? No? Yeah, I got a few things real quick. Uh, Link, Lauk, um, obviously not the first outing, you know, wasn't what you want to see from him, but you said great things about him. Obviously going to be thrown probably back in the mix this weekend, um, especially with Dorsey may, not, not being able to go. Um, what were your kind of words to him after that outing? Well, I think he, he executed the pitches fairly well. He had some really tight, close misses. And it's just absorb what you just experienced. Um, you have to absorb that. We can do all the practicing. The guy's been in the training room the entire summer, the whole fall rehabbing. So this is new. That this isn't like <laughs> this isn't like a kid that was fresh and came out of a really good high school season and some like this is this is a learning on the fly a little bit. We can do all the scrimmages we want. He did not throw a lot in the scrimmages. He never got to really extend outings like some of these other guys. So we're learning and he's learning. And it wasn't far off. I I, I think there's an excitement of just clearly being on this mound in this stadium with this team being able to pitch again so he's going to be fine it, it wasn't as far off as maybe I thought when you rewatch some of the pitches so he's going to be fine it was just settling he's he's a poised individual like you you can if you haven't talked to him enough yet he's just quietly competitive with what he does and he's going to be fine so it's just hey learn what that felt like and then in his week's work, you know, he can apply some of the things that he felt that maybe can help him a little bit mechanically or just mentally, like, stay engaged with the mechanics and the thought process to, to execute the pitch. It's just a little bit better. It wasn't, it wasn't awful. Okay. Appreciate it. Link, I have one more. Sorry. Uh, you're, I know you're probably not going to always run as much as you did last weekend, but I think you already have in three games almost half as many steals as you had all of last year. I guess how much better suited is this lineup to really use that as an asset? It seems like a, more, a lineup more than last year that speed on the bases can be a real asset for y'all. Our technique and the thought process is probably going to outweigh the raw speed. Um, with the group. There are times the run game lines up. There's times that you're forcing it and hoping that you can take advantage. And there's other times you feel it might be difficult. So when I talk to you guys about a variety offensively, there were moments in the first three games that the run game clearly was in play. You know, there may be games when it's not. There may be games when the extra base hit and the guys are on it. That that really, quite frankly, hasn't been in play yet. So Pushing the button and the guy's comfort level with doing it and stealing second, dirt ball reads, going first to third, making a good decision as a trail runner. You know, some of those things are trained and learned and push the button at the right moment versus um, just raw, pure outrunning the ball and having an electric, dynamic foot speed lineup. I think we have some good runners. But I think the instinctual awareness and the things we work on, we work hard on this. So I think some of the details of the base running has shown up, and that's that's really good to see. You're going to need that piece. But this the base stealing component may not line up as well every time you step on the field as it as it clearly does in some other moments. So you have to be ready and know what you're doing. And then hopefully you're selecting the right moments and the right guys to to take those opportunities. Link, is that something a lot of programs at the travel ball level are working on? Or how much have you had to kind of program the players to embrace this and seeing it pay off in a win like it did on Tuesday? How valuable is that for you moving forward? Well, when you start this on August 20th or whatever it was, like the first thing we do is – our base running jump steal thought process at first, second, and some of the things we do at third. So we work on this all the time. Um, we don't condition the position players other than their base running stuff. 
and how we run the bases in batting practice. And we don't do it as hard in pregame settings as we do in practice. But in the fall and in the preseason, all of our skill work, conditioning, like we make sure we're doing base running reps, jumps, looks, turns, touching the base, the discussion on sliding. Sliding is always the last part of a of a good base running play. There, there's a slide aspect to most of your stolen bases and your dirt ball reads and your decisions there. That's that's part of it. So we work hard on this. And I think with the travel ball experience, you know, in the summer and fall, not everybody gets to have sessions like that where you're dedicating 20 or 30 minutes to just the jumps and the reads on the bases. So for the last 15 years, that's what I've tried to do. And when it when it works and lines up, you can see at times how efficient the players can make it look. It is not easy. It's also not easy to teach it. So I'm proud of what we've done. Again, you know, it's not something that is a given and an automatic every time we have a base runner. You have to be intelligent and look for the right opportunity. So you're your acquisition rate is 80% or above ideally is what you want. So they work at it hard. It's not an easy dynamic of the game to, to teach. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you guys.